Hello everybody, this is Fred with Wentworth CCTV of New England and we are coming at you with a video today on a subscriber uh, requested topic which is routing for a commercial grade Wi-Fi system. Um, we talk about the access points a lot, the differences between Wi-Fi and 6 a lot, building bridges a lot, even PoE switches a lot. But we always say make sure you hook up your PoE switch to your internet modem and kind of leave it at that. We don't go into the routing mechanisms that there are to, that makes all this work. Um, so we're going to cover a little bit of that now. Okay, and what we're going to do, we're going to plug this in, into one of your uh, modem ports. And this is a Microtech router board. Okay, these retail for $70. Um, and they compete with a Cisco Industrial router. Um, that retails for 10 times as much of this. The router OS software in here is amazing. You will get lost in all the uh, industrial grade features that are built into the switch. And unlike Cisco and some of the others, uh, there's no license fee. Okay, it's a one-time purchase. Um, but we use these with our Wi-Fi systems and we've had incredible results. Um, the main thing to know with a micro tick router is you need to plug the feed from your internet service provider Again, whether it's a fiber switch or a cable modem like this, it needs to be plugged into port 1 um, of the router board. Okay. The router board will be plugged into the uplink port of your controlling switch, um, whether it's Ingenious, Ubiquity, whoever you use um, for your access point, still have a PoE switch or a controller. You want to plug your router board into the uplink port. Okay, that's very important. You don't want to use one of these one gig PoE ports. These are to power devices over Ethernet. We don't need that when we're connecting a router. We just need an uplink port. The other reason you use an uplink port, a lot of these switches have a 2.5 gigabit uplink port and only one gigabit PoE ports. Um, so you're missing out on 1.5 gigs of bandwidth if you use uh, the wrong port. So make sure you use one of the uplink ports. And then of course, um, the last step would be plugging your access point into one of the PoE ports of your PoE switch, right? Um, why all this is important, okay? Um, a lot of folks have gotten in trouble wiring um, their Wi-Fi controller, uh, their PoE switch, directly to a internet service provider's modem slash router. They're not made for the capacity, folks. I'm telling you, it won't work. It's not going to be good. Um, so get yourself a good router. Um, even cloud-based access points, which we use today, Wi-Fi 6, um, they are issued IP addresses from your router on your LAN. Okay? So those access points and these switches are getting their IP address on your local network from your router. So we need a good router for this stuff to work. You could have the best access points, the best switches, the best bridges in the world. Um, if you have a crappy routing device, um, your Wi-Fi system is going to be crappy. So you need to start with good infrastructure and that's a good switch, okay, to make sure those access points get the IP address with no latency, um, that they're good at getting good bandwidth, um, and they can distribute that Wi-Fi to our clients. We talked about cloud-based Wi-Fi. There's a link up top of the screen talking about that. But with cloud-based Wi-Fi, we use NAT, and the cloud actually gives each client or person connected to the access point their IP address, okay? With the cloud, this routing device doesn't give our clients IP addresses. The cloud does. That's very important. Um, because we only have, what, 256 IP addresses uh, on a 24-bit system, um, which is what most everybody has. So we need the cloud to get 500 people, 600 people uh, on a network. We need the cloud to issue those clients' IP addresses. What we're going to do now is we are going to log into this uh, router board remotely. I'm going to show you how to set this up to view and configure remotely. Um, so if you have issues and need to reboot it, you can do it while you're away from the facility. We're going to cover that right now. Okay, so we have our Microtech router 
um, plugged into the modem now and we are going to log in to the um, Microtech router to configure it for remote viewing and remote configuration using the Microtech Winbox um, app. First thing we need to do is locate the router on our network. I know from experience that it's going to be at 192 period, 168 period, 88 period 1. Um, but to find that, if you didn't know that, you just type CMD in your search bar. It'll bring you to the command prompt and we would do a IP, IP config um, and it will show your router um, as the gateway. As you can see, default gateway 192 period 168 period 88 period 1. So that is what you use as its address to log into it in a browser. Okay. So 192.168.88.1. Okay. Um, this is the first time logging into this router OS software, um, which is Microtix uh, software. This is very powerful soft powerful software. It's a powerful router router. I said earlier it compares to Cisco um, industrial commercial routers um, at every turn. Um, the web figure options, the security options. Um, are something typically you would pay for. Um, so, so it's really an amazing setup. Um, so enough about that. Let's go into the WebFig um, portal, and you will see you have a ton of options. We can do mesh, um, IP settings, radius servers, firewalls, um, you name it, it's in here. Um, but for purposes of remote viewing, um, the first thing we want to do is change our password, right? We don't want to leave anything with the factory default for password. So go ahead and enter a nice secure password. Now we'll do the same and we're going to apply configuration. Okay, beautiful. Now what we're going to do is go into our web fig. We're going to pick the IP thumbnail okay and the first thing we want to do is go to cloud and enable the cloud ddns okay ddns right here we want to enable it we want to hit apply and it will give us our dns information right here dns name we want to highlight this and copy this okay because we're going to have to we're going to have to enter that dns address into winbox to remote view um, this router. Okay, so that's our first step. Then we're going to go down from here to services and we want to make sure that the Winbox service at port 8291 is enabled. And as we see here, it is. So we're just going to hit apply and okay. Okay. Now the last thing we have to do in order to remote view and remote configure this router off premise is go into our firewall thumbnail. OK, and as you can see, there is no rule um, for uh, Winbox. So we're going to add one or create it. And in this, uh, we want to enable it. It's not going to be a uh, port forwarding. It's going to be an input rule. Um, our protocol, we want to have TCP. We're going to go down to um, destination port, not service port, destination port. And we're going to type 8291 um, for the Winbox port. And we're going to scroll on down here. And we are going to make sure the action here is on accept. We want to make sure that's right. And for comment, we want to note that this is a rule for the Winbox remote view software. Okay. Um, so let's double check our work here. We have port 8291, protocol TCP. Our chain is input. We're going to apply this rule and hit OK. Now, the last thing we want to do, that rule that we just created for port 8291, we want to drag this up to number three right here. OK, why we have to do this to make it work, I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't know. I wish I knew, but that's what you have to do. So we're just going to click here and we're going to 
bring it up to number three. Now we have number three is our 8291 uh, rule for a win box. And we will, I was going to say apply that, but I don't think we have to, folks. No, nope, that will stay there just fine. Uh, 8291, beautiful. So the last step is what? We got to try this out. Let's see if it works. The first thing we need to do to see if it works is we need to go back to web config and we need to download the WinBox software. So if you just click that box, it's going to open WinBox, okay? And we are going to cut and paste the DNS address, okay? with a colon and the port, 8291, just like as you were using a port forwarding rule. This is the important part, friends, okay? We want to use this DNS to connect remotely. Right now we're on the local network, so we can't connect to ourselves. Um, as you can see, I am plugged at this point directly into the router, configuring it. I'm going to unplug this and switch to Wi-Fi, okay? I'm gonna switch to Wi-Fi before I try to connect. Obviously, we want to enter our correct password. And then we want to hit this connect button. And bada boom, bada bang. Look at this, we are remote viewing at this point, this router. So I could bring my laptop to um, Boston. I could bring it to Orlando. I could bring it wherever I want all over the country and be able to access this switch. Um, of course, the 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 uh, settings are the same. They're set up a little bit different, um, but we can go into interfaces, see, you know, which ports being used. Um, we can look at our mesh settings, radius server, um, any of the tools, the, the VLAN tools, anything that you need to access with this, with this router, you can do remotely. And we'll show you uptime, memory, CPU usage, and time, okay? Um, so this is how you view your micro tick router remotely, okay? You can see what's going on remotely. It's a great tool. It's a great router. Um, we will see you in the field.